So welcome Diana Cooper back to Lifts and Equip Podden. How are you today? Hello, I am very well. Lovely to see you. Yes, the same to you. I just realized that you are in the screen with the Swedish flag's colors. It's blue <laughs> and yellow. Yellow and the uh, Archangel Christine behind. Yeah. yeah. But you're also the color of your book, The Golden Future. Indeed. And yeah. this is what we're here to talk about. So um, we are about to launch this book in Swedish. We will use the same cover. We will use the same title, but in Swedish. Den gyllene framtiden. So it's coming out in uh, well, end of April, I think. Mm-hmm. And we're super excited. Great. Well, it's a very exciting book. You know, so many people say, oh, what a terrible world we're leaving for our children and grandchildren. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And I say, no, (laughs) everything is changing. We are heading for a golden future. Your children and grandchildren are so blessed to be here at this time when Mm. literally everything is changing. We have to go through the, the change period, of course, and the analogy I use is that of a kitchen. If you've ever gone through a new kitchen being placed in your house, you know, you have to go through all the cupboards coming off the walls and the mess and the chaos as the old is removed. And during that period, you think of the new kitchen coming in. And that's what keeps you going. That's what's happening now. And very soon we're going to start the rebuilding and then we will start seeing where we're going. So what you're saying, it's that the period that we're in right now, it's not um, it's not uncommon to feel that this is um, frustrating and a bit hard and tough and rough. Because we are in that transition period. We are in taking down the kitchen period. We are absolutely at the end of that. I think this year is going to be very fast moving. The last bits are coming off the walls and it's going to look very bare. People are going to find that very scary. But we're moving through it. There's going to be the revelation, you know, taken off the kitchen wall my goodness, look what you found behind it. Yes. Uh, lots of homes. <laughs> a lot yes. of revelations, a lot of clearing, really oh, a lot of protesting, a lot of uh, clearing out the old mm. so that the new can start a process of construction. It's uh, it's probably the most challenging time that there's been in the, in the history of the world. And Every single person that is here now has incarnated specifically to be here at this time so that they can help with the transition. It is an awesome, awesome experience to be here as one world ends and a new one begins. I mean, this is extraordinary for a soul to be here right now. I have to read something that you have written <laughs> okay. in the beginning of the book it's so beautiful it's fantastic actually the editor of the book in swedish she sent me when she was done with the book she sent me an email and said this is an amazing book i don't know but i know one thing and i'm not the same person as i was before i read this book ah Yeah, lots of people say that. Oh, really? It reminds us of who we are, where we're going, why we're here, and and focuses us on the amazing things that are happening. Even though a lot of what's coming in is actually beyond our understanding. Yes. Nevertheless, we know something very exciting is happening. I have to say that when I considered this book for translation, I was a little bit, uh, can this be true? You know, that kind of questions. Can I, can I 
believe this. And it's because you, exactly what you say, it's beyond what we can understand right now and here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'll read those few lines. Is that okay with you? Yeah. So your invitation to earth. Earth is a special mystery school. The lessons and understandings offered are unique. You are amazingly blessed to receive the opportunity to be here, to be there, to be here. Rejoicing in a rainbow, examining a butterfly, stroking a cat, touching a petal, smelling a flower, paddling in a stream of play or playing with a child are sensations only available on earth. So like you said, we should be so blessed to be here at this point in time. Indeed. Sometimes Indeed. we forget that. I think so. We forget how important nature is and that this is the one place you can experience it. Now, there are also challenges on earth. And they do say, I'm sure you've probably heard this, that if you leave your body and you're out in the universe and you meet somebody and you tell them you've been incarnated on earth, they say, wow, you are brave. You've been to earth <laughs> because it's the most difficult plane. But it pushes us forward, pushes our ascension journey forward. It's yeah. extraordinary to be here and to be here now to help with this 20 year period of transition is amazing. Because as you know, Atlantis lasted for 260,000 years. That ended in 2012. And then Earth and the entire universe and all the universes had 20 years to move up a dimension. But Earth had fallen behind, and so we had two dimensions to move in 20 years. Unique in the entire history of the planet, nothing like that had ever been attempted before. And that's why we've had so much help from the universe. And so we, we have to accept all this help to push us forward, because the reason that Earth is behindhand is because they sent out a clarion call asking for a planet to undertake the experiment of free will. And only Earth was willing to do this. And so we nobody expected us to fall behind as we did. Mm. However, we did. And because we were the brave ones that undertook this experiment, all this help is coming in from all over the universes for us now i guess we didn't ex we didn't foresee what consequences free will could actually um could no. actually result in no one had any concept of it mm -hmm. and as we move higher and higher we only want to do what's for the highest good so we in a sense have less free will as we move up the frequency band so we'll be moving into a time when people want to do what's for the highest good of everybody. So is that about less free will or is it the definition of free will? Because I'm no, still thinking the no, free the will and the good of all, it goes together. Yes, it's about you, you, you have free will, but you, what you want to do is for the highest good of everybody. And so that's what we do. Like, you know, the economies okay. of the world are collapsing right now. And, you know, the, the book talks about what's happening about health, the economies, education, all of that sort of thing. But all the economies are collapsing right now because it's the end of that old paradigm. The old pyramid structure is no longer what we need on Earth. That's third dimensional. So all of that is going. And that's being all the banks, for example, will have closed by 2029. That's not very far ahead. Mm -hmm. And by 2032, they will have gone completely. And so that has to be replaced by something. It'll be replaced by local currencies 
And people say, well, where can I put my money? Well, the answer is some cryptos will do well, some won't. So you have to use your judgment. But gold will be solid, land will be solid. Housing, not so solid because the population of the planet is dropping now. Because by 2032, you'll have much higher frequency people who need more space, need more nature around them. And so there'll be fewer people who want to be in that fifth dimensional paradigm on earth at that time. So there'll be a huge economic metamorphosis on earth as we no longer trade in the old ways because the navel chakra is coming in. Now this is the chakra of fairness, of equality, of oneness. So when you want fairness and equality and oneness, you cannot imagine goods being made cheaply in awful conditions in Bangladesh, being transported all the way over here for rich people to use. You know, that's just not right. It's not right to have huge discrepancies in income between people and some are starving and some aren't. So all of that will be changing because we no longer consider that viable in a fifth dimensional world mm -hmm. then after 2032 there will be no use for money people will exchange they will give things away because in the fifth dimensional consciousness this is something we can't understand right now but in the fifth dimensional consciousness abundance comes to you the ho it's it's a totally different concept. Your needs are automatically met. And so this is why it's so hard for people to understand where we're going. Mm -hmm. In the fifth dimensional consciousness, if you need something, it's there for you. So if you need a transport to take you somewhere, you think about it, open your front door and a car arrives for you. It's, can you imagine what that's like? No, no. Well, I can imagine, but it, it's, <laughs> it's far ahead. It's the consciousness that we're moving towards. And yeah. it, it's the same with the planet. Because the planet will be fifth dimensional, as soon as we are fully fifth dimensional, the world is at peace. Of course, you don't have war at the fifth dimension. The world is at peace. There is international cooperation. Therefore, the frequency that Earth radiates out is different. We then attract our abundance needs from the universe. And this comes in all sorts of forms. It comes in forms of higher spiritual technology and technology that we can use for everybody. Not as it is now, where everything is expensive and where a lot of the frequency bands are harmful. Only that which is of the highest good for the people will come in. And so that means that we can have um, food made, grown, easily, effortlessly, nutritionally rich, abundantly, enough for everybody a totally new concept because there's enough, because people have abundance consciousness, no one takes more than they need. And so there is enough for everyone. But this is after 2032. We have to, in that time, change everything. So at the moment, the education system is built Huge schools, well, they are in the UK anyway, huge schools built for the egos of politicians, not to cover the needs of the children. That will change. We will have small communities with small schools and the children will be treated as individuals because the new children coming in have got very different brain structures. They're mm. totally different to the children of the past. Already, every child being born has got 12 strands of DNA intact. They just haven't been activated. And what they need in order to activate the 12 strands of DNA is peace. 
peace, quiet, stillness. As soon as people feel more centered, harmonious, and at peace, then, of course, those children will be able to activate their 12 strands of DNA, and then they will have the awesome spiritual gifts and talents that they've had in Atlantean times, be able to see auras. That means that everybody will be open Nobody can be dishonest because everyone can see your energy fields. And so there is total honesty everywhere. Now, if there's total honesty, everybody feels safe. And so there will be a feeling of safety and trust again. Mm -hmm. it, everything is sort of winding up to make the whole world better. People will be communicating telepathically. And this means that, again, there's no distortion in the messages that go from one person to another. People will be opening their hearts and attuning to each other. And when they do that, there's much more sense of love and comfort. Mm. People will be moving from or raising the frequency of the sacral chakra, and that's the sexual chakra. So relationships will be built on love rather than a physical energy. And this means that parents will be attuning heart to heart, and the children will feel much safer, much happier, and everybody will be enclosed in love and connecting with love. What's happening right now is quite interesting. People's earth star chakras are starting to open. More and more people are becoming fifth dimensional. I asked my guide yesterday, and there are now 39% of people on the planet fifth dimensional. As and is that all the time then, or, you know, coming in and out of that? It's going to be 39%. Um, once you're fifth dimensional, you're fifth dimensional in the main, and that's growing and growing. Think you'll find that that is probably if I ask in a couple of weeks time it will have gone up a bit because everything is changing so rapidly mm -hmm. and um, and everybody is living in that or will be living very soon in a more of a state of love and trust and hope after so, all if so you don't want to be fifth dimensional you don't want to stay on the planet you you won't want to be here mm -hmm. after 2032 Sorry. So if you are not spiritual and you hear what you say, what what would they what would how would they recognize they are in a new dimension? Well, it's interesting you say not spiritual. I'm not entirely sure what you mean. There are no, a lot of people, a lot of people don't identify themselves as being spiritual or being being or understanding this kind of evolution of on earth. You don't have to. If you're a good person, you're kind, you're open-hearted, you're generous, that is a wonderful quality. That is an ascension path in its own right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be spiritual angels mm -hmm. for that to be like that. Mm -hmm. some, of, some of the... In, you can be an agnostic, you can be an atheist, but you can be a really, really good person and still ascend. Of course. That's good. Good clarification. So, I mean, this book is a vision for the future that we are already part of, we can say. So how did you, what made you write it and where did you get the information from? Um, I wrote it because that's what my guides thought was the next best thing, the most needed thing. And I get my information from Kumika, who is my guide. He's also my monad, which is interestingly enough. And so um, we're very, Next very... Thing that that is. Um, your, everybody knows that they have a soul. That's your higher self. Beyond your higher self, there is a monad. So it's the next level up. A lot of people think of, of their monad as God. But in fact, of course, we're just one inch up. <laughs> there's, there's masses and masses beyond that. But uh, people are getting closer and closer. Now, I did an event last year in Portugal. And at that event, or 
worldwide, the result of that event was 70,000 70, people connecting with their monads. And so that makes a huge difference. Yeah, of course. It's a, lot, it's a lot of people raising their frequency and they were ready to do so, obviously. Yes, that's beautiful. So um, this book came out in August of last year in its original version, English. So, and you told me that you heard how it's going. Yeah, no, no, it's going very well. People everywhere are starting to talk about the golden future. It's, it's really interesting that uh, people are just ready. The consciousness was ready for it to happen. The reason we have uh, chosen to bring it to Sweden is because we have had several requests for it. Okay, and, good. Well, not the only reason, because, you know, I always have an eye on you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's always fun when we get requests from our, our readers that they want a certain book. Well, so that one yeah. has several requests. Yes. Oh, well, that's lovely to hear. I think it's just people are totally ready to have a vision presented to them that's realistic mm -hmm. and at the same time um, that was so exciting, something that we can really focus on. And there are the step-by-step -step instructions of how to prepare your body, prepare your chakras, so that you will participate in it and you will be there for the golden future. I mean, do you know, there has been so much happening in the last six months. It's almost unbelievable. We did this event in Portugal and at that event we established Andromeda and the codes of rejuvenation could come in, established Helios, codes of regeneration, but also connecting you with all you can be codes of Jupiter, and that's about health and abundance consciousness. Now, they were established then, they were activated in January this year, and that means that people can actively bring them into their physical bodies. For the first time this year in January, we were able to access Ply the Pleiades, and we've always been able to do that, but access the light codes of source healing and bring those into our physical body, into our cells, to start shifting our bodies, because we are moving towards crystalline light bodies, moving towards a crystalline brain. Now, this doesn't mean to say you're going to be hard like a crystal. It <laughs> means that you're going to have the qualities of a crystal, so that the atoms within you will be will be arranged, organized according to sacred geometry so that you then can do awesome things that we could not do in a physical body before. People will be living much longer. They will be much healthier. We'll be, we won't need hospitals. We won't need allopathic medicine anymore. So it's, what about the, those of us who are already here? Will we also change into... It's happening all the time. We are changing bit by bit. Many people now on a daily basis are starting to call in these energies. Anyone, a lot of people are doing the monadic merge meditation that I did in Portugal. I do it every single day. Yeah. And I, uh, yes, I've it's been not the one we're doing today, is it? No, 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 no. It's no. Not, it's, it's all my the viewers opinion. should know that we are doing an exercise today. Yeah, we're going to bring in a triple ascension flames. And we do. I thought we'd do the ascension planes for healing. A lot of people like that, and um, yeah, and that's really, really lovely because Jesus carries a flame. The ascended masters can carry a flames if they are of a certain frequency, and all archangels. And so it'll be Jesus and Mary and Archangel Raphael, and then they bring their flames in together, and wow, it can have a huge effect on you on your physical body, and we're ready for it. And so as I was saying, all the old hospitals, these huge hospitals, these specialized hospitals, all the old allopathic medicine, that's old age, that's no longer needed in the new, because in the, we needed the allopathic medicine because we all, we had to clear the karma in this 20 years. So, so many people have had huge amounts of karma 
to clear out of their bodies. And that meant that they came in with all sorts of imbalances and stuff, genetic karma, ancestral karma, country karma, all of this has had to be cleared. I mean, some mighty souls have come in over the last few years to take this away with them. You know, this great big wave of cancer that's gone around the planet, that's because those people have taken with them as part of their service as they've left the planet, a whole lot of the negative energy on Earth. It's been part of a clearance program and there's been so much of it. They've been serving at a soul, I mean, not at a human level, of course, nobody would choose that. But at a soul level, then you would. And for many people, it's been the final clearance of their karma or for their entire families to take all that with them and remove it for the world. A huge act of service. It's, just, it's uh, very clear that you see things in a different way. You have a higher perspective than a lot of people on earth. Uh, we have, uh, we can confide um, or we can be uh, happy that you do have that talent so that we have someone to look, to look up to. Well, it's not that. It's just that if you look at things from a higher perspective, then it all makes sense. Otherwise, why you've got to you say it's your time to pass over. You have a choice very often about how you do that. Well, why would you choose to go in this way or that way? There's always a reason. And if you know that in dying in a one particular way, you can totally clear your karma and perhaps your family and for your children or whatever, then that's an amazing thing to do. Yes, and true. it gives people comfort to know that. Mm. I was talking to somebody just last week that I don't know, but she was young and she was she'd given a couple of weeks to live. And I explained to her about what she was doing and why she was doing it. And it was like, oh, okay. I'd never thought of it like that. I just thought it was bad luck. Not at all. No, never, never. And she was actually a very evolved soul. Didn't come. Did she con contact you or how do you get in touch with Oh, her? somebody else contacted me on her behalf, somebody I knew. Yeah. I'm sorry. But you know, we don't know that. Most people don't understand this. No, but I write about these things in my newsletters, in my books. I put yes. them out on YouTube. So, you know, so there are lots of people that are telling people, are sharing this information so yeah. that we don't know. I know in my newsletter this month, I put out a whole lot about what happens after you die. Because it's, I thought, oh, somebody asked me the question. I thought, oh, well, that's simple. And then I asked my guide. And actually, it isn't that simple because it depends where you're at at that time. If you're third dimensional, one thing happens, you're collected by Azrael, the archangel. But if you're fifth dimension, you're collected by more. If you come from another universe, you're connected with by Ashtar, and different things happen. And it can help you to understand. So it makes it all very clear what can happen to you afterwards and why. So yeah. I just think that's very helpful. We and should just make a note to everyone listening that they should sign up for your newsletter and have your information sent to them. And you find Diana on dianacooper.com. Thank you. Yes, I try to put something out every month that people will find helpful. Whatever I'm given or a question that comes in to me and then I, I write about it mm -hmm. in my newsletter. But another thing that's happening, in January it started, and that was that Pluto moved in to Aquarius. And so lots of people know that on an astrological level, but it meant that we were able to access the codes of Pluto. and. <laughs> I didn't know anything about Pluto, but my guide said you can now access Pluto every day. It's silver platinum frequency. You go to Pluto, you access with love the energy. And what it does, it enables you to access higher frequencies. So it enables you to go up to another level higher than you could before. And then so what what do we do to connect to it? Do we do we meditate and um... well I do it as part of my morning meditation. I just 
um, access with love, mm. the light codes of Pluto and bring them through. The important words are the with love. With love. I, I have noticed that if I'm accessing another planet or information somewhere and I forget to say with love, I'm thinking, where's the energy? Where's the energy? I can't oh. feel it. And I add with love and it suddenly comes pouring in. It's like the 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 key. <laughs> very, very interesting to observe how it is. Anyway, a week after I started doing this, I woke in the middle of the night with this man standing there. He was a surgeon. He was dressed as a surgeon, all in green with a cap on. And then he was gone. And I thought, wow. I asked my guy, I said, did he give me psychic surgery? He said, no, no. He gave you a full body, uh, a full body cellular upgrade. I said, oh, oh. oh thank you. Oh, well, thank you. And then three days later, in the middle of the day, I went and sat on the sofa and suddenly I was projected up into Pluto. I saw the brightest light I've ever seen in my life. And I was taken into this chamber. And then when I came out again, I you know, asked about what was going on, etc. And they said, well, that chamber on Pluto is the first chamber. That's where you can go for full body cellular healing. And for my next workshop, I'm to take people there and they will be met by a team of 10th dimensional medical masters who will take them through a full body cellular upgrade. And I thought, wow, that is amazing. There are so many people that are ready for this now that that's what they're doing. And the thing is, once you've got an upgrade in your body, when you talk to people, even though they have no idea, you are passing the energy on. So we're constantly passing energy on to other people. Yeah, of course. You know, of you, course we are. That's very evident, I think. Yeah. Every every single time you learn something, you're spreading that information, mm -hmm. that consciousness. Yeah. So what about you? How have you been feeling the last six months, despite everything that's going on um, with, with books and um, uh, the golden future emerging? How are you? In your I have body. been feeling very excited. Yes. I've been I've been going to Andromeda and um, Helios every day for regeneration and rejuvenation. But here's the laugh. I was feeling so full of energy. I thought, right, I now have to get my physical body so much stronger. And so I did half an hour skipping and got the weights out pulled my Achilles tendon, that's the tendon in my foot, and, and pulled all the muscles in the side of my body. <laughs> then I decided I had to walk through the pain. That's the <laughs> worst thing to do. And so and that was a two-hour trek through the up the hill and down dale, after which I've been hobbling around. <laughs> you were what? trying too much at, uh, in a short time, I guess. <laughs> Yes, but I will get back to normal. And so I said, well, look, I know that my fifth dimensional health um, body is is in, is, is nearly in. So why doesn't that, stop, you know, why can't I just heal myself, you know, as an, heal my own body? And he said, well... If you act like an idiot and you overdo it, you have you have to go through it. You can't just say, oh, I've done it now, I'm healed. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. But it does make sense. And it's funny to hear that you are still learning from human errors. <laughs> all the time. Absolutely all the time. Yes, that's what we're here for. Yes. And that life doesn't stop, really, even though that we're going into the golden future, we still have a life on Earth, wouldn't you say? Well, the aim is if you is to have 25% physical, 25% emotional, 25% mental, and 25% spiritual. And I know that I was, like, 
all spiritual and and physical, but not much in the emotional, you know, lots of mental. And that was out of balance. And it, it was interesting because what they said to me was, listen on Audible to um, just light novels. That would bring my emotional up and it would make my mental come down. So then I could be in balance. And, you know, okay. it, we have to repeat this. Story. We have to repeat this. You say that we are about to balance out. So we have like 20%. 25%, yeah. Of? Your physical body. Yes. Your emotional body, your mental body, and your spiritual body. So you have to um, perhaps have your spiritual life is a quarter. Your um, emotionally, you're in touch with your emotions. Uh, and mentally, I mean, I was writing books all the time. I was always working, thinking, thinking, thinking. My mental body was way out and I, my physical body has been okay because I walk my dogs for two hours a day. So that kept my physical body with its balance. Mm -hmm. But I was mentally too far out and emotionally too low. And so they gave me something simple that I could do, which felt counterintuitive at first. Oh, I shouldn't be listening to this. I should be getting on with some work. But no, overall, that was the best thing to do to bring me into balance. I think this is a really good exercise. And I, can I ask you, do you have any good, for example, if, you're, if your balance is on, um, if you're high on emotion and low on physical, for example, of course, you could increase the physical exercise and stuff like that but how do you decrease emotion for example do you read less or do you watch less movies or what do you do to balance that for example? well if you're doing more of something else mm -hmm. then something else goes down okay yeah automatically mm -hmm. um, and so anything you do in that line would help but if you were all in motion and you weren't doing enough thinking then read a book that's going to engage your left brain. Mm. The thing about listening is that it engages your right brain. So if it's something you don't have to concentrate too much on and it's light and perhaps it's an emotional type of story, mm. that increases your emotion. But if you want to increase the thinking part, the mental, then you would read using your left brain something that you have to concentrate on. I think this is a really good tool to just, um, ha um, how do you say, to estimate yourself and where are you high and where are you low? What could you think? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and a lot of people aren't doing anything physically. It's very easy to up that and go for a walk if you can. Yeah. And also, like you said, I'm, I'm a lot like you being very uh, into the doing and the the mental uh, parts of working 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 yes. you know. so the emotional one of my first introductions to the spiritual world was actually when someone was doing palmistry for me mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know him but he was a, a friend's a friend of a friend and uh, he said you, you need to drop down from your head to your heart. So even though I feel lots of emotions uh, in my life, I'm still working from my head and not from my heart, I guess. So it's a, it's a steady process <laughs> to drop down. <laughs> yeah, it is, but it's, uh, I, I don't hear that you, that you um, haven't got your heart open. Oh, no, no, this is also many years ago. So a lot of things have happened, I think. Yes, yeah. And and you, like you don't look as if you're what we call a couch potato. You look as if you're <laughs> out there active and doing things. So I, well, I, the physical part is not a problem. No. Yeah. No. And the spiritual isn't a problem. No, it's not a problem. It's balancing the mental, emotional. Yeah, I guess so. 
Yeah. I want to tell everyone that there is a card deck coming out accompanying this book, not in Swedish at this point. Oh, you have it there. Good, good, good. That's the little booklet. Yes. yes. Got the card. It's not so little, it's quite big. Oh, it's actually absolutely stunning. They're full of color and life and it, oh, which this one is um the, that's the economy it's about the buddha and bringing in fairness in the new age mm -hmm. what is this one this is law which of course we won't be having because people will now be in total balance oh I, I don't know, they're amazing. just all amazing i can't tell you here so that. so and we can use them oh, in conjunction with the Mm -hmm. with the book we can read the book the, the book is quite you know it's texty uh, but it's super full of uh, exercises yeah. and visualizations breathing exercises and also the one that we're doing next and uh, it's very inspirational and if you could just i would say to all the viewers that if you could just Read this as something that is uh, inspirational and then let it sit to you, let it drop down to your heart. Mm. It, you will see that it's um, it's got something special. Mm. I think it is. It's going to shift people. And the biggest thing it gives you is the vision and the hope. Every yes. time you read something and you go, oh, yes. And you're thinking about it, you're creating it for everybody. Just reading the book is a service. And my guide said just touching the book immediately moves you into the fifth dimension. Yeah. Because it's all fifth dimensional, everything in it is fifth dimensional. Yeah. So uh, you have met our viewers before. Um, still, the Swedish audience is quite fond of you. And oh, very nice to know. Oh, <laughs> you know this already. You've been here several times. Right? Don't be so shy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, take this opportunity to say something to them. Sweden is a very evolved place. So it's going to be one of the first places that is fully fifth dimensional, creates fifth dimensional community and is a beacon for the world. And that every one of you is important in that you're sending out that energy at a high frequency to enable the whole world to move forward into the golden future. Mm. It's an amazing time. I think you'll find that very high frequency people come into Sweden, you know, incarnate there because they're ready to do so, to be an example to the world. Thank you. I will thank from all the Swedish people. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> there are places that are, are really leading the world and places, of course, that need to be led. And so that's what's happening. Those that are ready come into the places where they can serve by show it being the example, showing the way. Yeah. You know, some places are going to have a very difficult time economically. Everywhere is going to be difficult. But if you love nature and you're not hung up on having a big car and a big house, then it's going to be much easier to make the transition. Yeah, of course. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, there's a thought coming to me uh, several times. I, I figure I'd just ask you. So... When we're looking at this ascension process that we're in, mm. looking at the young people today, I don't know the name of that generation, but you know, when thinking about the 20 year olds or the 25, 30 year olds, we're talking about them as today in society in Swedish, that they are a bit different than the people that were born on the seventies, like myself. They want a different kind of life. From, from the employer side, they might mm -hmm. be viewed as a little bit of lazy, not wanting to work as much, and so on. So would you say this has anything to do with the ascension process, that they are actually not valuing work in the same way that... Um... 
Yes. They're way ahead of us. Yeah, because <laughs> in the golden future, of course, people won't work. They'll do whatever gives them soul satisfaction. Mm. And so they won't need to work as we have a, a job today. We'll only do it. Creativity will be honored. Music will be honored. People growing organic vegetables will be. People who are, love playing with children. New things will be honored because that's what holds your frequency high. Work, work, work does not hold your frequency high. Hmm. No, I guess you're right. I think they're ahead of us. Sometimes, you know, as an entrepreneur, you would think people need to work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but then again, we don't know what the world would look like. Well, you do uh, when these people are out in their in the same situation as um, myself and uh, other. But it's interesting what you say. A lot of them want to work for themselves. In other words, we, I said the word work, but express themselves, be responsible for themselves, look after themselves. It, it's a very high state of being yeah. in a young person. It is, certainly. Anybody. You know, it's yeah. like you know, people will be taking responsibility for their health, for everything. Yeah. It won't be as it has been. Thank you, Diana. So. Should we, should we transfer into an exercise together? Okay. Well, Bring what everyone with this suggested was that we brought in some ascension flames. Now, what an ascension flame is is an energy, and some of the masters can bring them in, and some of the and all of the archangels, and they're an energy which has the has all the qualities of that being plus source energy. So they're very, very high frequency. And when they bring them into you, then it touches you at a cellular level. So what I suggest you do is just close your eyes and we're going to bring in three ascension flames for healing. And the first one is the flame of divine healing and so if you just let yourself open your heart and be aware of Jesus the bringer of cosmic love dressed in pure white robes and he is walking along holding his magnificent flame of gold, pink and white, holding it up like a beacon above him. And as he approaches you, he touches your heart with one hand and then slowly brings the flame down. Just sense it, this beautiful gold, pink and white beacon coming down over you. It's coming down over your head, your shoulders, holding a wonderful healing energy coming down over your torso, your hips and legs until it engulfs you. Breathe it in. Just breathe it very carefully and slowly into every cell of your body. Take your time to let it come into anywhere in your body that you particularly need it. And then Jesus stands on your right hand side. Now you're aware of Mother Mary stepping towards you. 
She is dressed in pale blue and she's holding in her hands the most delicate and beautiful blue flame of compassionate healing. Before you prepare to bathe in this flame, look into Mary's blue eyes. They are filled with compassion, understanding and healing. And then breathe the energy in as she gently draws the flame down over your body. Breathe it in. I sense that beautiful blue flame all around you. Touching you at a deep cellular level. And then Mary stands at your left. Now Archangel Raphael, the mighty angel of healing, places his emerald healing flame on the ground in front of you. As it flickers there, it becomes more transparent and you might even be able to sense your totally healthy divine self. Have a sense of your frequency rising to align with the frequency of the flame. Then step into it and relax. Allow yourself to merge with your highest health possibilities. And Archangel Raphael stands in front of you. And then see your sense, Jesus, Mary and Archangel Raphael holding hands while you stand in the centre as the triple healing flames work on you at a cellular level. And then when you're ready, open your eyes. That was beautiful, Diana. I was really following your voice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Diana, do you know that you have a fantastic um, telling, telling voice, like storytelling voice? <laughs> well, people often say they fall asleep. <laughs> I have to be careful. Yeah. If it's not because it's boring, it's because it's soothing, I guess. I hope so. I'm, I know so. <laughs> Thank you. And it's also in, in here, isn't it? In the book. Yeah. Yes, of course. Together with everything else. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> there is so much here to work with and okay. read and be inspired by. So yeah. So what are you? What are you um, doing this weekend? Are you celebrating anything for spring and sun and warmth? And what well, are you? No, I'm actually giving a, a talk on Sunday. Oh. Ab about much about the things that we've talked about today and about the golden future and the energies that have come in since Portugal and how we're all needing to upgrade now our bodies. And where will you have this talk? 
that's just locally. And then next weekend, I'm in Hamburg giving a talk. You're quite active for your age still. I'm getting younger and younger. I've just been to Costa Rica. I was the first up the volcanoes. I was the first down the 500 steps to the waterfalls. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're funny. Yes, I want to be like you when I'm your, well, I'm mean, when I'm your physical age. Can you say yes. 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 I'm only 83. I consider that to be completely young. It is. It and is. Until I, until I did too much skipping and weightlifting, I was. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen to anybody. It could happen to me. Even. I know. It could happen to my children. <laughs> Many thanks, Diana. I hope that you will have a wonderful weekend, a good speech on Sunday, a good trip to Hamburg next week, and I will. Um, I will look forward to seeing you again. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. And lovely talking to you. Yes, the same. Bye-bye, Diana. Bye-bye. For now.